Hello, this is Coach DK coming at you with Coffee Cup Games, and in this series, we're going to be doing some Stratomatic. Hey, 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 this is Coach DK. I'm uh, just going to go over some stats and standings and highlights from where we are at the end of June. We did go a few games into July by accident, but that's okay. You'll still be able to get a good sense of it. As you look at the American League, you can see that Chicago Invaders are still leading the pack, but they are in a very tight race with the Cleveland Babes, who are only two games behind them. The Hoosiers of Indianapolis, um, Milwaukee Creams, and the Detroit Wolverines all have winning records. They are in a nice little bunch it's in the middle of the pack. And then at the bottom, you got the Buffalo um, Bulls, Kansas City Blues, and the Minneapolis Millers. Uh, the Millers have the worst record having um, in all of Major League. They've only won less than 35% of their games. And so they are obviously uh, the worst team so far that we've seen. On the National League side, we got the Brooklyn Superbas. They are continuing to dominate the National League. They pretty much had the lead from the beginning of the season. But the Bean Eaters are making a hard push right now. They've closed the gap. It was up around 12 and a half games. Um, Boston has pretty much cut that in half. They are only six and a half games behind. Um, they are followed not too far behind them as the St. Louis Cardinals, the Chicago Orphans, and the Philadelphia Phillies um, are right there. The Chicago Orphans, the number four team, um, are the one of the four teams that have a winning record. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies and New York Giants are below the 500 mark um, but in seventh place again is who had originally come in second place in the original and real life season of 1900 but the Pittsburgh Pirates are still continuing to struggle that they have been improving up to 44 percent wins so they have gotten better um, Cincinnati um, Red Stockings is the worst team in the National League as we look at the overall records and then look at the streaks and the last several games, homes, losses, all that stuff, uh, you'll see that Boston has won eight games in a row, which is part of the reason for their surge. They are 9-1 in their last 10, ten games. Um, Cleveland, though having lost their last one, um, is 8-2, and two, so that helps explain why they are closing that gap on Chicago. And St. Louis, who has made a run all the way up to third place, um, they have won five in a row. They are eight and two. And as you can tell, Minneapolis has lost four games in a row. They are one and nine in the last ten games, explaining why they continue to dip. Um, but um, not too far behind them is the New York Giants, who currently have lost five, and the Philadelphia Phillies have lost four. They are two and eight in the last several games, uh, last 10 games. Um, so that's kind of like what you really see. And as you can tell, Brooklyn was 20 and 10 um, in May. They were 22 and eight in April, outstanding records, but they are went only 15 and 15. Uh, so they played 500 ball in June. Um, but you can see Chicago, um, the National League uh, really jumped up 22, eight, and so that got them all the way up into the winning record and helped put them, give them a little bit of an advantage there. Um, Indianapolis, 21 and nine. They obviously had a real good month. Um, and then you see Minneapolis, eight and 22. And Kansas City with the worst record in the month after a really strong April, going 20 and 10, having the second most wins in April they then dip to the worst uh, record in May, and then the worst record in June. So Kansas City um, is obviously really, really struggling when it comes to uh, where they are. Let's go ahead and uh, continue. Um, let's look at, maybe let's go to league leaders. Um, Elmer Flick leads the league. He's hitting 383, uh, the Philadelphia outfielder. Um, has taken the lead uh, in the past. It was Ossie Pickering um, from Cleveland. Honus Wagner's right there in the mix. He's at 378. Jesse Burkett from St. Louis is 376. Nap Lajoie is at 374. Um, 
Jake Beckley is hitting 372. Those are all the guys over 372. Um, out of all those players, down to Keeler, only one non-Hall of Famer, which is Pickering um, from Cleveland. Runs scored, um, we see um, Burkett with 89 runs, Elmer Flick with 82. Um, let's go to hits. We have one player over 150 hits. That is Pickering. Um, for doubles, we see Green from Chicago. Would not have guessed that. I would have thought it had been somebody more like Pickering, LaJoie, Kelly, or uh, Delahante. For triples, we do see Honus Wagner with 17 triples. Um, he's three higher than the next place guy. So he's been doing really, really well. Um, home runs, Elmer Flick again pops his name up. So Elmer Flick, as you can tell, has the highest average. He is second in runs scored. He is fourth in hits, one in home runs. And also notice this, one in home and runs batted in with 73 tied with Jesse Burkett. Um, so it seems like Elmer Flick might be the best player right now on the field uh, for sure. Um, and so he's obviously having a standout season. Um, let's look at a couple of other stats. We see the league leader in um, stolen bases. We have Anderson from Milwaukee and Pickering again shows up. He has 47 for uh, Cleveland. And so several players over 30, a lot of players 25 and up, but you really only see two players who are really sticking it out there. Um, taking as many risks as possible, and that's Anderson and Pickering, um, who are obviously leading with a significant lead in stolen bases. Hitting streak, Pickering still has the longest hitting streak of 24 games. Um, Hamilton went 21, Nance from Minneapolis went 20, Lave Cross from Brooklyn went 20, and Van Haltren from New York went 20 as well. So... We do have several good hitting streaks, nothing over the 25 range, obviously nothing in the 30 range, but Pickering right now has the highest record. We have nobody currently with a uh, streak that's going on that is above 15. Uh, the slugging percentage, of course, you see Elmer Flick, who is um, winning an average and leading in home runs, so that's not a surprise there. He's well over um, the second place, Honus Wagner from Pittsburgh, who's hit 549. Only six players over 500 slugging percentage. That doesn't really surprise me um, for the dead ball era. Um, on base percentage is Hall of Famer John McGraw. Um, he is just known for getting on base, drawing walks, doing anything he can to get on base. His on base percentage of almost 52%, 519, is absolutely incredible. Um, and then Total bases, uh, no surprise. Elmer Flick with 219. Honus Wagner is in second with 212. Those are the only two players currently above the 200 mark. Um, errors, always find a little bit interesting. 59 errors by Cleveland's Shea. Chief Zimmer of Pittsburgh. Um, ironically, has 52. And if my memory serves me correctly, he's usually a pretty decent uh defensive player, but he has had made 52 errors. Um, so unfortunate there. Um, now that we really do get to the pitchers, we have Cy Young leading the league with 18 wins. This is the first time um, Cy Young originally in the year 1900 did not have a winning record, um, did not even reach 20 wins. It was the first time in his career that that had happened. Um, Cy Young looks like he is well on his way to hit the 20 mark as we are about halfway through the season um, with 18 wins he's doing incredible notice all the players from the chicago invaders of the american league they have katol who has 14 wins fisher with 13 and patterson with 13. so obviously um, you can see why chicago is one of the top teams um, out there Leading the league with losses is Lee uh, from Kansas City, who's tied with Bailey from Indianapolis. They both have, unfortunately, 15 losses, not the top of the list you want to be on. Um, ERA, you see Katol. He has a 1.28 ERA. And the last time we did a game, he was in it, and 
he got rocked. Um, and so, which is ironic that he still is incredibly um, so low. But you see these four Charlotte guys, um, you have Gatol at 1.28. In third place, you have Denzer at 1.79. Fourth is Patterson at 1.8. And in 10th is Fisher at 2.35. So um, Chicago Invaders, American League, are doing absolutely incredible. Um, you do see two guys from Milwaukee, Rubidell and uh, Reedy. Um, you see a couple guys from Indianapolis. You got Kellum and Gardner. Uh, a couple guys from Cleveland in Hart and Hoffer. So see a lot of the same teams showing up. Um, obviously, it is Katol who has the best ERA, um, Cy Young with the most wins. Complete games, you have uh, J Jack Katol and you have Pink Hawley, both with 12. Um, Deneen has 11, and Joe McKennedy has 11 as well. For saves, um, Howe has been pretty much all season. Um, Howe, Harry Howe from Brooklyn has leading, but Wilson Gardner and Harvey are all right behind him. Um, shutouts, maybe one player has four shutouts, and that is uh, Jack Cattol. Um He is has four shutouts, but you do see Frisk, Gear, Deenan, and Pink Holly all with three. Um, the most earned runs, wow, Patton has given up 105 earned runs. The Kansas City pitcher obviously is having a season he would like to forget. Um, strikeouts, we have uh, Cy Young, uh, the Cardinals' right-hander. Future Hall of Famer, um, he is leading the league with 70. Three other guys are above 60. That is Noodles Hawn at 62, Ned Garvin at 62, and Jack Cattol at 63. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, Jack Cattol actually led the American League um, in 1900 with strikeouts. So no surprise that he's leading it now. Um, here's an interesting one that I saw. Um, you have Rube Woodall from Milwaukee. Who's averaging 4.6 strikeouts every nine innings, and then you got the same player, Rube Dahl from Pittsburgh, uh, who has a 4.16 strikeouts per nine innings. And so, as we mentioned before, Rube Dahl played actually for both Pittsburgh and Milwaukee during the season, year 1900. You will see several players that are similar like that. You'll see Topsy Hartzell, who's on multiple teams, um, and you'll see Rube Waddell. And so both of them are present uh, in multiple places. But those are the league leaders. Um, you'll see that Philadelphia leads the league with a 298 average, almost hitting 300 as a team. That is 40 points better than the last place in Minneapolis. So I'm not sure who's better or who's worse. Is Philadelphia just that good or is Minneapolis just that bad? My gut is Minneapolis is that bad as we have about five teams uh, that are all above 290. And so only two teams are below 270, um, Buffalo being the other one. Minneapolis is eight points behind them. So Minneapolis really struggles when you look at the league. Totals is 282. Minneapolis is just really, really struggling. Um, ERA, we did point this out with all the Chicago guys, the league ERA is 3.66. Chicago is at 2.32, absolutely incredible. Um, unfortunately, they're only hitting 274, so they are fifth worst team um, in batting in the league, but they are by far the best pitching staff. Uh, Milwaukee is second with a 2.69. Indianapolis 3.07 and then Cleveland is a 3.142. So those top four guys really, four teams are really, really uh, dominant on the mound when it comes to their um, ERA. And as you can tell, all of them have winning records. Every team who is below the 3.66 league average has a winning record. We cannot, I don't believe, say the same thing about every team. I'm just checking St. Louis. I hope they have a winning record. Detroit has a winning record. So maybe it is true. Nope. I, we already know this one. New York in 295. They are tied for second in the league in average, but they do not have a winning record. So obviously pitching is more important is what we're seeing in this case. Um, and so... 
just something to keep an eye on as the, who leads the pitching, who leads the hitting. Always enjoy seeing that and see how it plays out. Um, another thing that I thought was really interesting, Boston has 37 home runs as a team. Second is 23, um, who are the St. Louis Cardinals. But Boston is definitely the power um, house team. Um, another interesting thing, St. Louis, who is 49 and 45, they have 499 RBIs. They have scored 566 runs, both lead the majors. Um, the worst defensive team, if my memory serves me correctly, um, is Minneapolis and then Buffalo. And then here's a good one, Kansas City and St. Louis um, are the worst defensive teams, it looks like, in the majors. The best one to, is um, Brooklyn at 203 and Chicago, at, or excuse me, and Boston at 197. Both of them with outstanding defense, um, not far behind is Detroit and I saw somebody else yep, Indianapolis so um, some teams have really good deep pitching good some teams have good hitting some teams have a little bit of both and so let's just go down let's look at the injury reports I always find this interesting see who's out um, we had Isbell in a game he actually got injured in the game that we were doing he is out still for another 59 games um, he is a backup he was not the original starter he was playing for us but unfortunately that is not something you want to see. Missing 59 games. The next highest is uh, Chambers from Boston. He's out for 22. But when we look at the team, um, Cleveland, who is doing very, very well right now, has 170 games missed so far this season through June. Um, and over an entire season already, and we're halfway through. And Cleveland is in second place. And that's what they would do if they had their entire field, their, their entire roster. Meaning that was 135. Um, now the lowest, ironically, is Buffalo. The worst team, one of the worst teams out there. Um, Buffalo is uh, the third worst, I want to say. I'm just double checking. Nope, they are the, yeah, third worst. So it's Minneapolis, Cincinnati, then Buffalo um, in the bottom in that order. And so, but Buffalo has only missed, had 25 games missed. So, um, always enjoy seeing who's missing, who's not there. Um, I know Wolverton is a starter. Frazier um, has a pitcher, I believe. Um, starting to learn some of these players much more. Uh, you see the Cleveland Bays, they have had 10 guys, 11 guys on injury at different times. Um, so, just something that obviously keeps on playing now. Um, as we continue just looking through the stats, I think I covered almost all these runs. ERA saves, wins, current hit streak. Current hit streak we didn't cover. Otis Wagner is leading with the current hit streak. He has 12 games. Gennins of Cleveland has 11. And Abatic, who I not I do not remember him um, playing in the game that we did for the Creams. He has an 11 game hitting streak. So don't really remember that um, at all. Here's the last thing we're going to be looking at, which um, a couple more things actually will do the awards and records. So a young leader right now is Jack Cattoll. He is the best pitcher. We just went against him. Um, Cy Young is second. It is obviously those two, and then followed by Ruby Bodell from Milwaukee. It is a three-man race. Cattoll is obviously winning it, but as we covered with Cattoll, he is a streaky pitcher. He will win a bunch, and then he will lose a bunch. To no surprise to me, Elmer Flick is the MVP leader. Um, Pickering was the leader, um, but I would say Flick definitely is deserving leading the league in the average and in home runs. You will see um, who some of the best players are. You have catchers, Powers, first base, Bickley, LeJoie, Jimmy Collins, Schubert, Burkett, Pickering, Flick um, are all leading. Um, Wagner, ironically, um, is behind Flick in the race. Um, Barrett, Jimmy Barrett, um, is behind Pickering, so good job for him. Um, Dolan is the second best shortstop, so some neat little list there. Um, Golden Gloves, you can see we got some Hall of Famers in there. Vic Willis from Boston, Nat LeJoie from Philadelphia, Jimmy Collins, Boston, George Davis, New York um, are some of the Hall of Famers. But I also see Peter Jones, Dummy Hoy, um, 
uh, Pickering from Cleveland, so some familiar names that we've covered. Um, the only one that I'm not as familiar with, ironically, is Fisher, because we've only done one Minneapolis game, but um, so let's go ahead and jump now down to the record book. Um, any records that were set, we did have two inning, two games that went to the 13th inning. Um, so previously it was just the one game in April, we had a bunch of 12s, but now we have two more games in the month that went to the 13th inning. Um, most runs, third place, 22, so 25 by one team, Minneapolis, when they destroyed Detroit, 25 to four still is the high. Most hits in that same game, 32 hits by Minneapolis. Um, looking for any new records that we might have. Most hits for both teams, 37 tied for fourth, happening June 19th. Um, not really seeing anything, home runs. We had two more guys, Sullivan twice, um, within a week, within four or five days, had games where he hit two home runs. So that's a big story. Um, Sullivan's probably one of the leaders I would imagine by now. I don't remember saying his name, but uh, in home runs, he, since he had four within the very end of the month, um, so that's pretty awesome. Looking, one of the ones I always try to look for is least amount of hits. And right here we go, least hits. Um, so we had another one hitter by Pink Hawley of New York when he went against Chicago. Um, so we have five players with a one hitter. Still nobody with a no hitter. So I always like to check that, see if anybody pops up there. Um, most strikeouts in one game. That's the new record that happened in June. Um, Sparks of Milwaukee struck out eight players in a nine inning game on June 9th. That's obviously significant, particularly in the dead ball era. And so um, there you go. That's the record book. So those are pretty much everything that we got right now. Um, we'll just get it back as we end on to the league stats. Um, Chicago, again, uh, leads the American League with a 59 and 37 record, but they are in a tight race with the Cleveland Babes. In the National League, you got Brooklyn Superbas, um, still with a somewhat comfortable, but very quickly closing and shortening lead over the Boston Bean Eaters. Again, the way that we do this is um, we take the top two teams from the original year 1900. And that was in the American League, Chicago and Milwaukee. And so they are automatically given a free pass into our ultimate tournament. Um, Brooklyn and Pittsburgh are already given it. So Pittsburgh, luckily for them, with being in seventh place, already have a free pass. So Boston's trying to make it um, and see if they can get in there. Chicago and Cleveland um, already, um, Chicago's already in there. Cleveland's trying to make a run for it. So the second place team was Milwaukee, they are in fourth. So you can tell some teams might uh, be able to add their name to the tournament. The only other way after that that you can make the tournament um, is to make it to the World Series. You have to win your, your league, conference, whatever you want to call it, um, playoffs to advance to the World Series. So um, that's how we're doing it. But at the end of June, you can tell the records, you can see the stats, you can see who the league leaders are, you can check out the record book. Uh, but thanks for uh, joining in. We hope you guys enjoyed it as we gave a little bit more of an in-depth um, look at everything this time than we have in the past. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Until next time, this is Coach DK. Have a good one.